Congratulations on your first stream. Chances are you had a pretty bare bones setup and a lot of questions. This video will broadly answer those questions and spark some new ideas as to how to improve your streaming as you grow. How do I make my stream look better? You search for Twitch overlays. Often these are products you buy for about 30 bucks on Nerd or Die or Own.TV. Nerd or Die has some free ones that are really gonna up your game, but the setup can be a bit complicated. If you wanna take it easy for now, I have a tutorial on a super simple way to just use GIFs to get nice overlays. It's got over a quarter million views on TikTok, so you know it's good. <laughs> That was pretentious. Okay, so your stream looks better, but maybe you don't look and sound as good as you want to. First, you need to come to an important realization. Audio trumps video. It's weird, but it's true. Audio is gonna win that battle every single time. So you're gonna wanna upgrade your audio first. I have a full tutorial on audio for OBS, so watch that first because you might be able to reconfigure your room, add some filters and settings on your current mic to make it sound a lot better. Like a whole world of difference, a whole new world, Latin reference. You're gonna feel like Jasmine on a magic carpet. But if that doesn't work, I really like the sound of the Blue Yeti microphone or the Amazon Basics USB condenser mic. And it's a pretty simple USB plug and play setup. You can't really go wrong if you're looking for your first upgrade. It sounds great. When it comes to video, lighting is more important than your camera. Again, not intuitive, but it's true. I also have a tutorial on lighting and video in OBS. You might be able to reconfigure some lights. You might be able to get away with a desk lamp pointed at your wall to bounce back at you. Otherwise, your first upgrade should probably be that cheap ring light on Amazon. Again, nice and simple plug and play with that. After that, you can look into a better webcam like the Logitech C920 or the Logitech Brio. If you're into this kind of techie video stuff, you can buy a used GoPro and then get a dedicated capture card onto your PC and connect it using an HDMI cable. But that's definitely Definitely very complicated if you're not into that kind of thing, you're not interested in it, but I think it's better than buying a webcam. That being said, the webcam will be fine. How do you see your Twitch chat while streaming? You prop up your phone or tablet right in front of you, open the Twitch app, and just read your chat from your phone. Easiest way I can think of. But it doesn't matter if you can see your Twitch chat if nobody's in it. How do you get people to watch you? You gotta build an audience on a more discoverable platform, and then you move that audience over to Twitch. So what does that mean? If you streamed on Twitch eight hours a day, every day for a year, you'd probably get nowhere because Twitch will never ever recommend you to anybody else. But if you made a YouTube video on like how to level up faster in a game and then somebody searched like, how do I level up faster in this game? YouTube might recommend your video to that person, right? YouTube's doing you a solid, they're taking your video and they're delivering it to the person that wants it. Same goes for Twitter. Twitter might show your tweet to a person searching a hashtag that you used. Same for Instagram. Same same for TikTok. So build yourself up on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, because people can actually find you there. And that means you're gonna be doing a lot of this. Hit that like button for the algorithm and please subscribe to the channel. I have a ton of OBS content and streaming content for you to look through. I'm also a professional animator, so we do a lot of that stuff here. And hey, what goes around comes around. So maybe you subscribe here and then people subscribe to you. I don't know, I'm not, uh... I don't know what's gonna happen, but uh, it might. But the concern is that you're taking these people away from bigger streamers that have all this fancy equipment and stuff. So should you be investing in that same type of equipment? No, not right now. You just had your first stream. You can do it. You can stream with whatever you have already you have already streamed so you don't need anything right now i would say stick with it for a month if you're still into it and then save up some pennies and you can look into some equipment sound fair this is such a hole to go down because the equipment can make your stream a lot better and a lot more enticing for people to stick around you got cameras and stream decks lights audio mixers twitch overlays once you stream for a bit longer identify your weaknesses and then buy them in that order maybe you have a really great mic because you're a musician but your lighting really stinks, then you're gonna wanna invest in lighting right out of the gate. And either way, you're gonna wanna assess things in this order, audio, lighting, video, then overlays. So if I was starting out on a budget, here's what I would buy and in what order. I'd buy the Amazon Basics USB condenser mic, super long name. I'd buy an affordable ring light off of Amazon. I'd buy a Logitech C920 or a Brio. Then I'd get a nice overlay pack from Nerd or Die or Own.TV. Unfortunately, all the money in the world is not a substitute for an engaging personality. So how do you act on stream? You talk to yourself. In broadcasting, which is what you're doing, you never want dead air. Air. You don't want silence. You want your audience to be engaged either by the game that you're playing, so something cool is happening in your game, or they're engaged by you and you're saying something interesting or you're doing something interesting or you're reacting in an interesting way. And you want one of those two things happening all the time. 
or as often as you can make that happen. The harsh reality is that people don't care about you unless you give them a reason to. You can't get something for nothing. So be entertaining or be helpful. Talk to yourself and your audience, tell stories, share tips, tricks, sing, tell jokes, I don't care, just make it interesting. Always be offering something and don't let dead air happen. Most people are more afraid that people will leave if their FPS isn't high enough, but the truth is that personality matters a lot more. In fact, 30 FPS is not that slow, guys. We watch film and animation in 24 FPS. The video you're watching now is 24 FPS. There's this idea in gaming culture that if it's not 60 FPS, then it's not worth watching. I take issue with it. There are plenty of games that don't even run in 60 FPS. They're still running at 30 FPS, and yet people will stream them in 60. Why? The like, the game doesn't even do 30. Also note that FPS means frames per second. You are asking your internet connection to blast. 60 images to a bunch of people every second, which is twice the amount of strain as 30 frames per second. If your PC and your internet connection can handle blasting 60 frames a second at people, then fine, then use 60 FPS. Otherwise, there is nothing wrong with 30 FPS. It's gonna free up more bandwidth, so your video might look a little crispier, and it reduces the chance of lag in your stream. People would 120% rather watch a 30 FPS stream with no lag than a 60 FPS stream that does lag. I'm sorry that got a little heated. It just, it, there's nothing wrong with 30. There's nothing wrong with 30. Okay. So what about 720p, that 1280 by 720 output settings that we put in the last video? 720p is the lowest level of HD that you can get, but it's still HD. And while I agree with you that I think 720p is, is pretty small, uh, you're not a gigantic company. I'm not a gigantic company. We are not people making their entire income from streaming. We both have consumer grade internet connections. I actually have a Canadian grade, so that's bad. Asking your internet connection to stream 720p is already super taxing. Again, 30 to 60 HD images blasting over your internet connection every second. That's a lot. Most people stream in 720p and there's a reason for it. Only the top streamers do 1080p. And even then they have to have great internet connections. Like crispy as hell, man. 720p is totally fine. It's what everybody else uses. If you got a monster upload speed, do 1080p, but you probably don't. You're probably just like all the rest of us. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. But let's say you're on 720p. Let's say you're doing 30 FPS and you still lag. What is happening? If your Twitch stream is lagging, but OBS is not lagging, then it's probably your internet upload speed. So do an internet speed test and look at your upload speed. You want at least eight megabytes a second. If you don't have eight megabytes a second, but you should have that or more because you pay for that, then you need to pick up your phone and call your internet service provider and politely, but insistently, ask them what the heck is going on. Otherwise, you may need to upgrade your internet package. If your OBS is lagging or your game is lagging on your end, then it's looking like you're gonna need to upgrade your PC. PC. or do some hacky things like run OBS as an administrator uh, or lower some of your gaming settings because your PC is struggling. Your PC is riding the struggle bus every time you're playing that game and running OBS and uh, probably gonna be costly to upgrade that PC. So I'd mess with the settings first. If you have any questions about green screening without a green screen, check out my video on that. And running through my OBS for everyone tutorial series will hopefully answer a ton of questions that you have about technically using OBS Studio. My name is Nick Mabry, your 3D coach. Good luck on your streaming journey. I'll see you later. Then once you, oh my God, this is water. I don't have COVID <coughs> that I know of.